My name is Julie Levy. I am the president of Progressive Promotions. We are a promotional products agency, which means we provide imprinted merchandise to corporations to help promote their brand. I am here to share with you information and insight and things that I wish somebody told me when I was in college starting my business. I went to Douglas College, which is the Women's College of Rutgers University. One day I went to the Douglas College bookstore and I noticed that the apparel, the t-shirts and the sweatshirts were not good looking. But if you went across the river to Rutgers College, they had cool swag. So I don't have any creative talent like some of you have. But I was smart enough to know the talent I didn't have. Rule number one, know what you don't know. And I took these fabulous logoed ideas that my friend came up with that said Douglas College with cool logos, and I had them screen printed on the t-shirts, and I started to sell t-shirts and then boxer shorts from my dormitory room when I was 21 years old. One day, I'm in my dormitory room, and I get a phone call from Mrs. Lowenstein. And Mrs. Lowenstein was the manager of the Douglas College bookstore. She says, well, I've seen some of the t-shirts on campus, and I would like to buy 36 t-shirts. Licensing of college logos didn't exist. So this was right before you didn't have the right to put college logos on merchandise. After this time, very shortly thereafter, they became very strict and you can't reproduce logos that exist without permission, without licenses. So I just want to put a time frame into it so that you don't go out and put Brooklyn College on t-shirts and think you could sell them and that it's legal. When I got out of college, I had a choice to make. I moved home to my apartment. I had a bedroom about the size of this desk and I continued running my company out of my bedroom in my parents' house. And I had an answering machine, and I had a typewriter. I left a message on the machine that said, Hi, at the time the company was called T-Shirt Express. Hi, you have reached T-Shirt Express. We are very busy right now processing orders. <laughs> and in the background, I had someone typing on the typewriter so that the machine sounded really busy. And I said, Can't reach you right now, but please call me back, and I'll be sure to get back to you. I started going door to door to bars and restaurants selling T-Shirts and selling apparel. That's how it began. I went into the East LA Cafe in Hoboken and I said, hi, would you like to buy t-shirts with your logo on it? And they said, you know what, we don't need t-shirts, but we can use aprons. And then I went to Chicken Galore and I said, would you like to buy t-shirts with your logo? They said, we don't need t-shirts, but we need hats. And I started to produce promotional items with logos and that was the beginning of the business. My first employee was my college roommate. And we decided that she was going to work for me because she was the only one I could afford to hire. I incorporated the company and changed it from a company called T-Shirt Express, which was too narrowing, to progressive promotions. And that was the very, very beginning of how it began. And I'm sharing this part of the story with you is because each one of you can start your own businesses today. But I'm going to share with you seven secrets, seven things that I wish somebody had told me. Number one, human resources, also called HR. Human resources are the people that we hire to help us in our businesses. When I first started my business, I did not invest in human resources. I tried to hire as inexpensively as I could. And that was a mistake. Because I wasn't hiring people who were better and smarter than me. I was hiring people who were too much like me and who, were a, who I was able to hire for cheap. That's not a way to grow your business. So, number one, hire people who know things that you don't know and take a risk and invest in good people early on. Train them, embrace them, inspire them, and motivate them. Now, if I knew this 23 years ago, my business would have grown faster earlier. Lesson number two goes under the finance section. Finance. There's a couple of secrets about finance that no one ever tells you. I don't know why they don't tell you this. Establish credit when you don't need it. Now the problem is we always go to the banks when we're desperate for money and they want to know what we have in the bank and if we had it in the bank we wouldn't need it in the first place. It's this catch-22 about getting capital. So how do we gain capital? How do we increase our capital? How do we manage it? Because we get it when we don't need it. Number three goes under the marketing umbrella. 
So I started my business, as I mentioned, I, I was in college still, and I, was, I developed my logo when I was in my English class. And the logo was straight lines, and it was gray, and it was blue, and it was boring, and it was dull. And I had someone freshen it up a little bit, but it wasn't who we were, and it didn't represent who I was. So when you develop your marketing, and you think about your brand, and what your brand means, and what your logo is going to look like, think about what you want your company to feel like, to smell like, to look like, and put all of that energy into developing the brand. So think about the big brands that you know, and when you establish your brand for your companies, make sure it really exudes the feeling that you want it to have. The number two thing under marketing is immediately build a compelling, robust website. Before anybody meets you or talks to you, they're gonna to go to your website. So build that website early on and make it very meaningful and make it look big. And nowadays that's really easy to do because you want people to have the perception that you're an established organization. And the third part of marketing is establish a kitschy, catchy tagline that's gonna help distinguish you from your competitors. A tagline that's gonna stick. Number four is sales, sales, sales. You want to establish a sales plan that makes sense. And you want to establish a sales plan that is sustainable, that keeps going on and on and on. So that if I left my company today, my organization would run beautifully without me because there's a sales plan in place. There's a secret I need to tell you about sales. It goes like this. It takes 12 contacts to close a sale. I don't care what you're selling. The national average takes 12 contacts to close a sale. Most people give up after the third contact. So just think about this notion as, a, as an idea. Just think about this concept. If you're tenacious and you know that it takes 12 contacts to make a sale, why would anybody give up on three? Now, your 12 contacts are not just phone calls. They're not just emails. Hello, everybody. Emails, they are not just emails. They're not just handwritten letters. They're interesting articles of interest. They're compelling stories. They're congratulatory notices. Number five is your business strategy. Strategy is not about who you decide to sell to, but strategy is the distinction of who you choose not to sell to. Strategy is that which differentiates you from your competition. Now, what you cannot do is say, our strategy is to provide the best customer service out there. Doesn't work. Everybody says that and it's meaningless. It has to be true uniqueness. A friend of mine owns a company that provides outsourced accounting services to the nonprofit industry. So that strategy tells me that she does not sell accounting services to people. She does not sell accounting services to business. She only sells accounting services to nonprofit. That's a brilliant strategy. Number six, operations. My, my secret here is putting as much value into the operations business as to the sales side of the business. I didn't do that. I put all my great energy into my sales side because that's what I knew better. All your SOPs, which are your standard operating procedures, should be set into place so that your company is running like a machine. And seven is public relations. The power of public relations is really a great one to keep in mind. Every local paper is looking for content. They want to hear your story. They want to hear your story. They want to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Write a blog if you don't already have one. Everybody should be writing a blog about their businesses. LinkedIn for professionals. Facebook is fabulous and I love Facebook. LinkedIn is a great way to network and to tell your story and start discussions on LinkedIn. And if you think that, you know, um, that something's really important to you, write about it and tell the story and get it out there and use the <coughs> PR. Use your Outlook, use your Blackberries, use your iPods, whatever you have to keep your contacts updated and current. And always remember to write down where you met the person and what they were in your life that day. This is all you kind of need to know. Now the rest is up to you. It's having that confidence, it's finding a product, and feeling really great about what's, what you can do for yourself. And creating your own story and writing your own book. And that's what this is about. So that's what I'm here to tell you today. I wish you lots and lots of luck. And that's, that's the end.